Hey, aunties, it's Chris from London. What's brewing today? Kirk Franklin stands tall. Ask your aunties, once a cheater, always a cheater? And Auntie Hennessy gets lit. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. Hey, Auntie. Hey, Auntie. Hey, y'all. It's hey, another community. Monday. How y'all doing? <laughs> Hopefully y'all fell back and uh, got you some some extra sleep this weekend or yesterday, yes. I guess, not even the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah, sleep Look, all the way I'm in. thankful. I'm thankful for this extra hour. I mean, <laughs> technically it's Wednesday, but I know when I hear this on Monday, when it's come out, right. I'm going to be thankful <laughs> as hell because my body has not adjusted to when we sprung forward back in March, April, whenever it is. It's been a daily struggle. Okay? It's been eight months of struggle. Come on now. <laughs> it's so hard. So hard. And I'm typically a morning person, but it's been wrecking me. Like, wow. ooh, child. It's just, nope. Mm-mm. And I can't even go to sleep early, too. So I end up falling asleep about like 10, 30, 11 o'clock right. every oh, wow. night. Yeah. And you're still struggling. Mm-hmm. Ooh, She's just also uh, just just a mess. So let me tell y'all, <laughs> I'm going to wake up on Monday today with a smile on my face. <laughs> Looking like the Kool Aid Man, I feel great. Okay, what could be the night that you like? You can't sleep for shit. Don't play me. Don't uh-uh. you with that? I, don't put that Buddha on my life. You, you know what? Mm-mm, where my holy water? I'm just right. Uh, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Okay? I hear you. I, I, I'm sorry, Boo. I'm sorry for speaking that out there. My bad. That's my bad. Words do have power. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ooh. We'll talk about that later too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But uh, today, so I'm, I'm still getting back into that work grind. And uh, yeah, how's that going? It's going well. Like, but it's just like, especially I still have a commute and I tried to get rid of a commute. And Lord, I'm thankful for a job for it to be able to pay my bills. So I'm not complaining at all. But my goal was to try to cut down on my commute. And I didn't do that. And so I had forgotten about just the grind of a commute because, like, in the morning it's an hour, at night hour plus. Uh, but Damn. today I was sitting there, right? I know, right? Ooh, That's a child. long time. To be oh yeah, but in that the Atlanta car. traffic ain't no joke, though. It ain't. Mm-mm. And today was pouring, so it was even worse. Like the second it sprinkles, traffic here is just insanity. No, mm. That but, or uh, snow. They ain't got no sense out there. Whew. Snow, I don't even deal with it. Snow, I'm like, stay your butt home. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I could drive in. I'm Midwest all day. Yeah. But, but mm-hmm. the everybody people from else here, on the roads, what you got to worry right. about? Driving like crazy. But um, but I, I thought of this today, and I texted, <laughs> I texted the aunties today. I was like, I got to open a uh, statement to to give you guys. Because yeah, I was so cracking myself up today. All day. <laughs> all day. So getting back in the work grind, and especially at a new place, a new building, there is one thing I for completely forgot about is Where do you finding poop? the right bathroom to go boo boo oh, in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> how did I guess? Do I, how'd you know? Because <laughs> not every bathroom in an office building is created equally. No, not at all. <laughs> And today I had to go so bad, and the bathroom on our floor is disgusting. Ooh. But I was just like, oh, I got to go. I got to go. Ooh. ooh. Uh-uh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, this bathroom is the worst. So I still got to hunt to find that right bathroom. <laughs> Girl, did you have to squat over the toilet where you didn't even go all the way on the seat? But right. you, like, kind of like, hover ooh. over it, you know? Huh. And your thighs <laughs> start shaking. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's a power squat today, girl. <laughs> like... <laughs> And so when that happened, I was like, oh, my God, I got to text them and I got to bring this up on the podcast because it's so true. I have forgotten. Oh, my God. Because the other buildings I've worked in, there's always every time I moved or got relocated and promoted, that was the one thing. He's like, oh, I got to find my bathroom. I got to find my stall. The one that's consistently clean. The one that ain't nobody just sitting next to you, like all on their phone and distracting you. I haven't found that yet. I haven't found that yet. See, see, whenever I get like that, I <laughs> I, I kind of trick my body. So what uh-huh. I do is I start making myself burp because I don't like to poop in public. I like to wait. Till <laughs> I, I, I'm good at holding it all damn day. So I'll like start burping just to release the tension out of my stomach a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, like I'll make myself pee just a little bit every other hour just so I can just make some more room a little bit. Just, you know, to 
the hold it out for a good eight hours until I get back home. But that, uh, mm-hmm. but no, yeah. you know, some days that, that that urge is coming. You like, oh, there ain't nothing stopping you. Nope. Like you got to find that bathroom and go. And that mm-hmm. was me today. Yeah. And I was sitting there cracking up at myself because I was literally so disgusted because the one like so it was three stalls and the one to the right had like a wet floor sign there. So it must have overflowed by somebody. So I was mm-hmm. already like oh, totally damn. disgusted by that. And then the other one had like pea splatters and boo-boo splatters all along oh. the side. I was like, who in the world is doing this? And sorry for your Monday morning if this is <laughs> making you upset. <laughs> Look, they but, putting that coffee down, that donut down, like, um, I'm good. I'm going to be skinny the day after this episode. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I was like, oh, my God, I got to ask Dewan and Jarrell, do you, like, especially, because Jarrell, you work from home now. Mm-hmm. But, Dewan, at A&E, have you found your particular bathroom? I have, but I'm okay. not really, that, like, super particular. Like, all the okay. bathrooms, there's, first of all, there's not a lot of men that work for my company. <laughs> So, okay you know oh she got the nice gotcha. bathrooms uh-huh. <laughs> yeah we have really nice all of our bathrooms are really nice actually so like when you were saying like the the bathroom was like not clean i'm like ooh, who said that because mm. <laughs> i have not right. had that experience <laughs> ever <laughs> but like oh, i don't so upset i don't really have that i don't really have that issue um i don't really like to go when i'm working I don't, I really don't, but sometimes, you know, you can't help, you can't help it. Exactly. But I do have, but I am a creature of habit. So there are like certain bathrooms that like, I like to go to just because I started going there and then I just keep going back. (laughs) So, (laughs) I mean, if you're not, if you're not using the bathroom, what you're going to these bathrooms for? No, 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 no. So like, if I have to go to the bathroom. I, I was, okay, I was like, not like, I never go. Mine was enough. <laughs> I was just, you're not clarification. I was just but asking. Usually, the but usually, I mean, like, I mean you, you do got that guy downstairs. You got that Look, security guy downstairs that will come upstairs and hunt you down, you know. Right. right on point. Well, you know, they, they are kind of strict. Mm-hmm. He was cute, though. He was like, yeah. oh, oh, I'll sign in. Sorry, sir. My bad. Yeah, they hunted us down. <laughs> but uh, you know that week for okay so for the community for y'all don't know so Jarrell and Fisnick came out to New York for a visit we had an amazing time I loved having you guys out here I was so sad when y'all left uh, but on the last day uh, before they were leaving they were going to explore the city and I told them well just bring your bags and then you can leave them in my office and then you can explore and then when you're ready to go just come back here and get them that way you don't have to go all the way back up to West Harlem where I live and then you know try to get to the airport so they did and I just met them downstairs on the street or whatever. We walked in. And usually when we have guests, you know, at work, you have to have them sign in. But, you know, they were just going to be coming in for a minute for a minute. And I'm only on the second floor. So I was like, well, just come on with me and we'll just go on upstairs. Well, we got to talking and whatnot and just chilling or whatever. And then here comes security coming up to my office and they know where I sit. (laughs) Because I'd be bringing in guests all the time. And so they were like, excuse me, Mr. Hawkins, but you have to have your guests sign in. <laughs> oh, so. they said the government name, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was Mr. cute, too. Hawkins. I was like, oh, 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 where do I sign? <laughs> mm-hmm. You can sign anywhere you want to, but. <laughs> but I normally, oh, getting back to the bathroom conversation, I normally go before, like, I normally go first thing in the morning. So, you know, and usually if I don't go by like, let's say 10 o'clock, I'm not going for the rest of the day. My body just no. doesn't shuts down. <laughs> it doesn't do number two for the rest of the day. Right. I might go number one, but I won't have to go number two for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah my, my body's just trained. all out of sorts. Right my now. system is my system is trained and I got these buns of steel. So ain't nothing going in or out without permission. OK, <laughs> let me t- let me say that. much. And, and according to last week's episode, when it does go in or out, she doesn't make a sound. <laughs> You oh, don't right. know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's an exclusive club. Only one There's a bottle make a sound in, right in the now. bedroom. Do you know what? If, not if a tree falls, does it make a sound, bitch? If the leg spread, does he make a sound? Does it make a sound? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Man. But yeah, I can't. So that was my situation today. But honestly, I'm usually pretty much on clockwork as well. But now my morning poop <laughs> <laughs> is at work now again. And uh-huh. so my body is just like all like, oh, wait, hold on. This ain't your normal like situation right now for the last few months. What's going on? 
and I just need to find that right bathroom. I got to So find after that right you bathroom. went, did you did you do a tour of the building to find like other bathrooms no, or she was busy today, so I had to get back to work, but it's going to be on the agenda at some point this week because I know it's probably going to happen again tomorrow. And so I'm going to be <laughs> so upset that I'm going to that same nasty bathroom, so I mm-hmm. need to literally do a tour. There must be um, a lot of men that work in your office. A lot of and, nasty men. Well, it's man. like a big like office building. So like the account I'm on has like a, a suite of this huge building. So they don't mm-hmm. own the entire building. Oh. So people could kind of go up and down the, the elevator and poop and pee wherever they want to, whatever bathroom. Oh, girl, you um, need to go on a find, field trip. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I need to find out which bathroom is the true bathroom that. Right. <laughs> you got. Spick see, you got to find the you got to find the other office gay and ask them because they'll give yeah, you the real tea. Have the, that's uh, true. I'm, I'm probably the only office gay in mine. So, because it's a smaller office. You're in Atlanta, girl. So. There's some deals. Don't play. Exactly. Like, don't play that game. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm the only gay. Lied. Lied. Oh, wait. In hold the on. Village. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> She's married now. I'm okay. married now. <laughs> so I don't know nothing. I, know I don't nothing. know now. Nah. I don't know now. Nah. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. She can't get the tea from them apps anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. <laughs> Sheesh, I'm all out of sorts. I don't got the tea. I don't got no eyes, nothing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. But Jarrell, also, I'm watching on TV right now, and, and it's the 90th minute minute. So Seattle is in the uh the cup final for soccer yes the they Sounders. won last night yeah and Atlanta's in the Eastern Conference final right now as we record this and they're down two one but I, I I'm hoping they find a miracle in the next like <laughs> two minutes oh okay they got plus five so they got five minutes to score and tie this thing because I have World Cup or not World Cup uh whatever the United Cup uh final tickets. And so it would be Atlanta versus Seattle. So me and Jarrell would be able to kind of talk shit throughout the week. So that's what I'm really oh, praying cute. for right now. Um, but it's not looking good. Ugh. Mm. Just, I hope that I hope they I hope they pull it out. I hope me they too. Pull it out. That would be cute. That'd be real cute. Oh, come on, Atlanta United. This city be so hyped for some soccer. I've never experienced that in my life until I moved to Atlanta. They are so hyped about Atlanta United. Aww. Like it's years for waiting list to get season tickets. Like it's crazy down here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I went to my first Sounders game um, a couple weekends ago. It was a lot of fun. Isn't it fun? Oh, um, let me tell you. That was first of all, that was my first professional soccer game at that too. Yeah. And I actually preferred it over an NFL game. Right. They were ruthless. Like. This guy had flopped on the field and was like being a little baby about it. And they started chanting, let him die. Let oh. him die. I was like, <laughs> okay, <then."Nuh-uh." laughs> there was another, there was another cheer where they were calling the other team a bitch. And I was like, oh, uh, uh, mm. what is You said, this going? is my kind of crowd. I was like, okay, they petty <laughs> like me. I found my people. I found my athletic people. Uh-uh. I was like, I'm here for this. Yeah, it was, it was legit. It was it was a lot of fun, a lot. They be of they fun. be all the way live there because like on yeah. TV, it's still a little slower. Mm-hmm. But when you're mm-hmm. there, like you just get amped up in in that uh, environment, and you're just like, shit, let them die, yeah. let them die. Uh-huh. <laughs> but we you know, were that's kind of what it's like for any sporting event, though. Like it's just so much better to be, even if you're in like the nosebleeds, it's just so much better to be at the game than like watching on TV. Yeah, absolutely. And like live in person sports are way better than on the sports all the time. But I mean, I've been to basically every sporting event you can name now after this. And I will say soccer and hockey is a little are the different. two. They they are the two most lit sports I've ever been to. And I'm like, white people are crazy. I mean, huh. don't get me wrong, there <laughs> there are other PLC people there in the crowd too. But predominantly at these sporting events, there are a lot of white people at these soccer and hockey Have matches. Have you ever seen a crowd going? And, ape shit. Man, <laughs> when they start throwing, when they start throwing squid on the like on on the freaking ice rink, when yeah, a person I do a hat this, trick yeah. and stuff like that, like uh-huh. I'm like, God damn, like right? OC, OC, I love it. That's too much. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's cool. I love so, it. Ugh. Yeah. 
And I got something to say to the community. I got something to say to the community. Um, <laughs> I don't appreciate y'all coming for me about this whole McDonald's blender. Which auntie is going to be the auntie that throw the blender? Uh, the fact yeah. that all of y'all, all of y'all was like auntie Except Jarell. one. I got a random vote out of that. You I got a random like- vote? Oh, oh like that said, must have been my vote. Was, was that my vote? Have you not heard <laughs> that? must have been my vote. I might have thrown that out there because I was like, I can't be the only one, damn it. Oh, but Jesus. low key, though, y'all right. Y'all know me, though. Right. Y'all know <laughs> right. That's me. That's right. me. That's like, yeah, that's her. That's her. But uh-huh. y'all could have threw one of the other aunties, you know, a little something, you know, Same. like. I know DeWan got zero. Yes. Thank I got you. one, and Jerome got like 98. <laughs> <laughs> I stay ready with bail money. I'm just saying. Oh, hey, <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you know you're secure. <laughs> Man. You're like, when you oh, got that goodness. bail money, you're like, okay, that's fine. I can look. I can take this L. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know people were like, oh, you know that's on T. Hennessy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For <laughs> right. real. For real. Oh, my goodness. And I saw the cutest little uh, Halloween picture of this little girl who went as a girl that got hit with the blender. <laughs> Shut up. Shut yes. Up. Yes. This little girl had a little... She painted herself with a black eye. She had a little McDonald's bag and a little blender <laughs> in uh-uh. her hand. And she took pictures laying on the ground <laughs> with one shoe <she> off. <laughs> damn it. Okay. I so, was like, damn. Update community. Atlanta just lost. Oh, that sucks. Should they play a... They play Toronto. Oh, Toronto. Oh. <sighs> so Carell's gonna be quiet the rest of the episode. Go ahead. What y'all like? What else? Y'all like? <laughs> well, listen. At least, <laughs> at least Corey turned the episode back up. So <laughs> you know, the fact you know he t- did. Don't tune out as soon as we start talking about anything that's sports related. Right. That is true. <laughs> it's like sports. Ugh. But he be <laughs> listening every mo- like I wake up. And he's listening to the podcast. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, it's cute. I'm like, oh, he's supporting me. Yeah. He's yeah. us, but he's supporting his yes. boo. I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah he's a good He's husband. like, you bitches be talking. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We sure do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't nobody tell me nothing. Damn. Can't tell me tell nothing. Me nothing. <laughs> oh, and by the way, community. We over here wearing wigs. We don't make right. it but like twenty minutes to the episode. We ain't even told them we over here like brushing our hair with this and is, everything. This is this is just every day for us now. For real. <laughs> We bought that life. So like, so like I was the first one to join and I had my wig on because I was like, mm-hmm. I was feeling a little bit like um I just got back from Pittsburgh and um I was just feeling a little bit drained because I've been on the road for so much and, you know, just been super busy. And I'm like, okay, we got to record. And it's super late when we're recording. I was like, you know what? I need to amp myself up. And ain't hmm. nothing better to amp yourself up than to put on a sassy wig. I know so that's she, right. So she got a lace front. She got a brown lace front. She ain't got no What's bangs. Her name? Uh, What's this her is name? Angela. This is Angela. Okay, now. Yeah. This is Why Angela. is it called Angela? Um, it makes me feel like Angela Bassett, you know, when she smoked the cigarette and burned the, um, burned the, the, uh, and what's love? <laughs> the trash. Not what's love got to do it. The trash burn and waiting to the, Yes, the trash in front of the house, the Mercedes Benz. Yes. Come on, Bernadine. All I, need, <laughs> all I need is, um, one of those little bandanas or whatever, you know, like the hmm. scarves or whatever, but it's, it's that same silhouette and same length. Right, so it's Angela and then Bernadine would be the shortcut. <laughs> yeah, Bernadine would be the shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> the Monica, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you got? Oh, what you man. got, Corral? I don't know. I got the little uh, rocker pixie. I don't know what to call this. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, what color is that? Is that purple? It's like a lavender blue dabadoo dabadai. And she got some like know. she's like wavy and kind of she cute a little little she side is cute. swoop. Yeah. She and the Jarrell's over here still doing rain, rainbow uh, bright here. Rainbow yes. Bright. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. They're going to be all the way synced. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Chris, for opening the show, by the way. Oh, thank damn it. You. Thank yes. you, Chris. Look, Chris. again, one thing. We got to hey, do better boo. at this, y'all. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for the opening, boo. <laughs> yes. My goodness. You know, we just get in. We be talking. We be forgetting. Subscribe, download, share. We we said we we're going to start saying that at the beginning of the show. We be forgetting. <laughs> We're going to have to give Chris a shout out since we did this so late. Thanks, sure. Chris. We're going to have to shout him yeah. out. He could be like the cutie of the week. You yes. know what? That's that's a good idea because he's he's mm-hmm. super cute and he's just got, yeah, got a really nice spirit and he's been rocking with us for a while. So, yeah, we're going to have to make him cutie of the week so y'all can yes. get to know Chris. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> From London. 
if I'm not, does he have a shirtless <laughs> pick? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, no, he's not okay. one of them gays. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. No. Well, Chris sent us a shirtless pick. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all peep, no, I'm not, I'm y'all peep that's the married one, <laughs> right? Y'all yeah, peep that that's the married one. I don't need to see nothing. The, 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 the other two aunties were like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> But guarantee you, if he's... But is he, is he... I don't even know who Chris... Which one is Chris? I'll send you a picture. Okay. <laughs> Oh. That doesn't that doesn't do anybody well, else any I was good. That's say, listening. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Community, anyway. stay <laughs> tuned for the Chris. cutie of the week, and y'all know right. who he is. <laughs> Ooh, but I just went on Instagram and saw Angel um, Curiel from um, Pose, and oh my goodness! I love. I'm so glad you brought that up. I love his and Janet Mock's relationship. Tell me more. Y'all didn't know. Oh, y'all didn't know there was dating. No, I did. That, that's T to they me. Got extra crickets, like. Yo! Oh yeah, twirl the hair, girl. I know they're dating. Yes, I did not okay. know that. I'm, yeah. I'm here for that. That's awesome. If you go so back, got... maybe I'm trying to think. Maybe two, three weeks ago, I think it was Angel's birthday, and Janet put a post saying, "You came out of nowhere. I was not looking for nobody when we first met. I wasn't even checking for you, and you found a way." Oh, hold on. Okay, come on, Angel. I said it to uh, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to put that on the community so what they so they know what we're talking about on Monday. Yes. Uh, but she was saying I wasn't checking for you, I wasn't checking for no one, and you somehow came and just like swooped me up and I love you. Thank you. And I was like, Oh, they don't that's put all their business out there. That's gotta be pretty interesting though, because because like, that's his she boss. writes <laughs> she writes for him to be with somebody else on the show. Yeah. So that's gotta be really We'll see if he really starts getting more speaking dynamic. lines next season. <laughs> Like all of a sudden, you're gonna have all the lines. <laughs> Look, okay. <laughs> That's probably why he was one of the faves though this last season. Yeah, he was good. He was like, I see you. Also, speaking speaking of celebrities, um, just want to say a rest, a rest in peace to John Witherspoon, who passed oh, today while yes. we're recording. Uh, that was that hit hard. I mean, he is a well-known actor that just had done so much from Boomerang to the Boondocks. All the Fridays. All yeah. the Fridays. Mm-hmm. Um, the he Wayne's was in the Wayne show. Brothers show. Yeah, you know, like... <sighs> Come on, he was Pops. A, he, Pops, I know, right? Dang. Like, I think that yeah. was one of the reasons why, like, my t- like my dad, when he was coaching, he wanted uh-huh. people to call him Pops, you know? Because he was just, like, that pay- that playful, you know, kind of, like, uncle dad that everyone just respect and love and that just crazy kooky at the same time. That's it, yeah. So, and he was just so much part of yeah. the culture. So, yeah, rest, rest in, in peace. peace and-, and that was just really unexpected because he wasn't sick or anything. Yeah. And it just kind of came out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We've lost a lot of great black men recently. Absolutely. Like Elijah Cummings, yeah, uh, John Witherspoon, the uh, the uh, representative from Michigan is escaping my na- mind oh. right now. He's been a rep for like fifty years in Michigan. Yes, mm-hmm. it's just like oh, gotta gotta give our people the roses when they still here. Tell them you Absolutely. love them. Tell your friends you love them. You just don't know. Tell your family. Yeah, no, that one hit me hard too. But yeah. you know who's not getting any love? Because it's going down in the um in the gospel world. You want to talk about that? Oh, Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Kirk Franklin. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. So Kirk Franklin is he's um what's the word? The kind of om- almost putting a ban out there or cancel culture for the Dove Awards. So like for those that don't know, so the Dove Awards and the Stellar Awards are like the two big. Uh, Christian music, almost Grammy level, honestly. Right. The Stellars are for gospel music. The Doves are for Christian music. So Christian is kind of like all encompassing. It's Christian rock. It could be whatever. Alternative. You know? However, it's also m- way more white, and it's owned by TBN, which is a, a a Christian channel, and it's based in Dallas, or at least used to be based in Dallas. So very conservative um, company. Mm-hmm. And so years ago, Kirk Franklin uh, won an award for like best artist or something, best artist ever. And he got up there, was doing an, a, spe- a speech talking about, you know, as a uh, Christian community, we got to do better at speaking up against violence against POC communities, et cetera, et cetera. 
the Dove Awards are not a live award show. So once it aired, they had edited his comments out where he talked about that specifically. So he was upset about it then, spoke to them, spoke out about it, saying, hey, you did not air my full speech, especially the one that really mattered. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. need to just thank my wife and all this. I want to have a a message behind what we're doing in this music. And it's a platform. So it's a platform for sure. So he had... Uh, meetings and talks with the people there at TBN and the Double War saying, hey, if I ever get a award and I do a speech, do not cut my speech out, please. Thank you. So years pass on by. And so I guess this year, or like this past week, the Double Wars aired again and he got another award. And he was talking about the killings in the black communities with like the Dallas and Fort Worth uh, cops, et cetera, et cetera. And what did they do again? Cut that cut portion that of his speech out. And so he was upset, rightfully so. And now he's gone on like IG and everything and wanting the gospel community to band together with him saying, you know, what, we are not supporting the Dove Awards anymore. We're not supporting TBN. We go on there and utilize the platform, but you guys utilize us as well. Like gospel music is a huge portion of Christian music. And Kirk Franklin's probably the biggest, like the biggest. or definitely one of the top three biggest gospel artists ever. And for them to do that to him, especially a person of color, shows how much there is still segregation even within the Christian uh, music community. Um, So it's been interesting just to see artists coming out of the woodwork supporting him saying, you know, hey, something like this is similar has happened to me or we're we're with you, Kirk. We're not going to the Dove Awards again. We're not doing this, whatever it may be, until they come up with a plan to support our community as well. So it's been this hoopla in the gospel community and we'll see what happens but it's just it, it's just sad to continue to see different situations where we're just getting overlooked mm-hmm. overlooked yeah, lo- and people not caring i love the i love the fact that this is happening because you don't really hear much controversy out of you know kind of like the christian music community at all um and you know when you think about like the the number of like black artists that are in that community, they, they have the same impact and the same connections to people that are being impacted by all the stuff that's been happening with police brutality and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd say it's, it's high time somebody stepped up and said, you know, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And, you know, I'm not going to continue to just use this platform and ignore the things that are going on. I'm going to use the platform that I have. And if you're not going to, you know, showcase my, my language, my voice, my whatever in its totality, then, you know, I can choose not to play with y'all. And I think that's, you know, at the end of the day, you have to show them what's, what's really important. And if it's really important for you to get your message out and you're finding that the, these outlets are not allowing you to do so, maybe to the people in the crowd, but like certainly to the rest of America, then say goodbye, get out. And then tell, and tell us, let us know what, what you're doing and why you're doing it so that we're aware. Cause I had no idea this stuff was going on. Yeah. I didn't know that this was going on either. Um, it's crazy to, to see the Christian community kind of having its issues within their own Christian community. You know, like normally when you hear about issues with the Christian community, it's in reference of like, what women can do with their body or, you know, the LGBTQIA, you know, community, like, you know, so it's, it's interesting to see that. Um, But like, I know Jesus is black, so it makes sense why they got an attitude, (laughs) you know, because they don't like the reality of it, (laughs) you know, but there um, there ain't no, there ain't no white people in the Bible. Let's let's call a spade a spade. Fact. (laughs) Fact. Uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. but you know, I mean, that's why there's different different denominations because uh, some church, some churches don't know how to be singing the gospel or or, or the song. Let me tell you, let me tell you, there is nothing Amen. like going to a Lutheran church Amen. and you've been at Baptist church all your life and they be like, let's sing this song and you be like, mm, oh, oh, we're not swaying. Right. Oh, there's no claps. <laughs> What is this cultic sound that y'all making? Like, <laughs> let me get up out of here. No, mm-mm. see, that's my church Aww. though. I'm. Se- I grew up Seventh Aww. Day Adventist, and we. Oh, we did don't you really? Do, yeah, and we don't do all that. Uh, Corey takes me every Easter or every Greek Easter because I guess their Easter is like a week or two after Christianity. I don't. Don't I don't get all the differences between the Easter's, but 
we go to uh, his little Saturday night. I don't know what they call it. But, like, I'm just so used. A, I played piano at my church forever. And, like, it was more of a Baptist church. It was non-denominational, but it was, you know, we we had some rhythm and some beats and some singers and, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so to go to his where it's just, like, they sing, but it's kind of more chanting and it's very rigid and structured. And, you know, I was like, yeah. oh, I don't know this. This is not <laughs> – and not to say it's bad or anything. It's just different, you know, than what, like, Jarrell said, than what – I came from and know and everything. And it's always interesting to go to different churches, but it, it, it just stinks. They see something like this in the, in the Christian and gospel world, just because their message is acceptance or should yeah. be, should and that be. God loves everyone and this and that, and to have segregation in that world. That ain't their message. That is not their message. <laughs> I wish it was their message. I wish that was what they, pre- what they preached, you know, but I mean, it also depends. I also know that every church is not the same, no matter the do- denomination. Um, I know my church was very accepting, but I know there are lots of churches that aren't. So, I mean, it definitely varies. But um, yeah, yeah. And it just sucks that it's down the racial divide again, because honestly, uh, the Dove Award is a, a very white owned award show and TBN is a very white owned broadcasting channel honestly um so sad and kirk is from that area <clears throat> so it's not like they don't know him like you know it's like mm-hmm. he's been around forever decades and so it's just weird that they would do that to him the biggest star in gospel and christian music honestly and he's from that area he's from that yeah. neck of the woods so but but you gonna well, do, we'll be following do what you, and see what happens exactly exactly but uh might be that time of the episode once again, once again. What time what is, is it? it? Ask, Ask your, your aunties. aunties. I know. <laughs> I hear it in my head now. I hear it in my head too. <laughs> now that lit. she didn't caught up on a couple of episodes. Now that she, right, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, who's going to do Ask Your Aunties? Who's got it up? I got it up. I ask that every time and I'll be okay. forgetting every and time. I have it too, so. Okay, I'll read it. <clears throat> the question is, if you have ch- if you've cheated in a previous relationship but have grown and don't want to be labeled as once a cheater, always a cheater, are you required to disclose to dating partners that you cheated in your past relationships? Mm, mm. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a really good one. Are I feel you like required to disclose. I think I think that's like the the operative word. I don't think that you're required to disclose anything. I think you should want to disclose anything. I think if you've, we've, listen, we've all been in relationships and have just been on this earth and we've done things that we're not proud of. And I think the, the, the biggest story that you can get out of that is a testimony of how you've learned from that experience, you know? And if you've cheated in the past and um, that's not who you are anymore. That's not the life that you're living anymore. You know, there's nothing wrong with with saying that. And I can understand the fear of wanting, not wanting to be labeled in that person's mind as, oh, well, he did this in the past or she did this in the past. So, you know, it's possible they can do it, he, that they're going to do it to me. But the reality of it is, is it's possible that anyone can do that to you. So, mm-hmm. you know, whether you've cheated in the past or not, that doesn't that doesn't automatically define your fate. And people make choices every single day to honor their commitments or not. So I think if the question really is asking about whether you are required to, I say no, but I would challenge your conscience to just be honest about your relationship past and what you've learned from it and how you've grown from it. And I think, you know, being honest about that with your potential partners, I think they'll really appreciate your vulnerability and your candor and your, and hopefully appreciate your growth from that place and continue in that journey with you. And I'm sure that that will probably open up opportunities for them to share things that they otherwise probably wouldn't, would not have shared with you that might be of the same vein. How do you know, bring you that up of? then? Like one, one day you just sit there like, hey boo, I cheated in my past. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like how does that come? Cause like part of me is just like, Unless the conversation d- doesn't go there ever, 
do you have to disclose so much of your past? And like you said, if and I, I feel like if you think the per- new person you're with is the one, you wouldn't want to do things you did in the past, like you said. You know, don't don't. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think if if I'm asked or if I was in that situation or of being a cheater or whatever, and I'm asked, I would be truthful. But I don't know if I would just be like one day, hey boo, this is what I did in my last relationship. You know, I don't know how that comes up ever. I think part of it is ownership, though. I think, t- like, taking ownership is what kind of helps you not be a cheater. Like, if you're really working on not being labeled once a cheater, always a cheater, I think taking ownership and being like, especially when you're dating, because you have those conversations when you talk about your past, you know? And you may, that's the perfect time to be like, you know, I had a relationship, I messed that up because I was doing X, Y, and Z, right. you know, but I've learned from it and I've grown from it. And this is what I'm looking for now in my life. This is what I did in my past to get me to where I am at this moment. And I think taking that approach is a good thing because that shows that you are trying to be better than who you were the day before or the weeks before or whatever the case is. Right, right. No, I, and then I, I that will be that. the appropriate time to, to say it. I mean, full disclosure, I mean, I've been on both sides. You know, I've been cheated on and I have cheated before Mm -hmm. in my past. And and I'm very open about it. Not in a sense like I want to rub it in or anything in a sense like that. But because I'm not perfect and I'm never going to be perfect. But I'm always, always, always trying to be the best drill that I can be. Mm -hmm. And every day should be a day for me to learn something. You know, um, if, if I'm at any point thinking that I've learned everything or that I'm perfect, then... I say, God, take me out then, because then that means I've li- I fulfilled my life, you know? So until then, every day needs to be a day of learning. And every day I need to be trying to be better than the day before, even if it's just a little bit. Yeah. So if you don't want to be labeled a cheater, then don't cheat. do better. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> yep, don't cheat. Do better. Do better and be the person that you want to be, because it's not is blaming the other person for your actions isn't the answer. You can only have accountability and look at yourself in the mirror and be like, oh, that's not who I want to be. So I need to do better. Also, think that, there's can, a, that can go to anything. I also think this goes back to the conversation we were having last week about what Tank was saying about, um, you know, like, does, you know, sucking dick make you gay? And more really to the the broader point that he was making, he was using it as an illustration, but um, For lying, to the broader yeah. point about lying, which is, you know, do you, if you lie twice in a relationship, does that make you a liar? And, you know, the, the point of it is, is that it's a pattern of behavior that, in a sense, defines you in other people's eyes. So if right. you've cheated once, that can just be a mistake. It doesn't make you a cheater, in a sense, in the real sense of the word. Like, if you think about a liar, any... Every one of us is told a lie, whether it's a big lie, a white lie, whatever you want to call it, it's still a lie. So mm-hmm. that does not that does not define you as a liar. But if you have a person who consistently lies and is and completely untruthful, <laughs> right, then yes, you are a liar. That is a pattern of behavior that you are living in that and that's your truth. But for somebody that cheated in their past, that doesn't automatically that doesn't automatically make you a cheater. And listen, Let's get away from the 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 rainbows and the um and the the star in the skies about what you know people's past should are. be. <laughs> right. Like people we're human beings and we we grow, we explore, we mm-hmm. make mistakes, and hopefully we grow from those mistakes. You know, we do things that we shouldn't do and you know, and for various reasons and you know we hopefully the the goal is that you learn from those mistakes and if it costs you a relationship it costs you a job it costs you something you know costs you face or whatever you know the the end result is that hopefully that you've grown from that and you you have now have boundaries that that dictate how you will live your life going forward so the and fear I think a lot of, of like, times oh i'm sorry go ahead well, it's just the fear that something that you did in the past, the one thing that you did in the past or the two things that you did in the past, but that's no longer your truth today. I think we need to like give that up. And I feel a lot of times too, it all, st- and I preach this so much, that it stems from communication. A lot of times, reason why people cheat or lie and this is that is the fear of what others are going to say if you spoke your truth, you know? And... I feel like we all, and it's easier said than done, trust. (laughs) But I feel like if we all, especially if you're in a relationship 
with someone you love and care for deeply and they love and care deeply, you should be able to say whatever your heart, you know, is feeling Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. deal with the repercussions of that rather than trying to lie about something or, you know, or cover things up and things like that. Um, and I get it. It's easier said than done, but I feel like so much blowback comes back more when you lie and try to cover things up because, oh, if you're in a relationship and you think someone else is cute or something, and and I, I'm not saying poly is for everyone or whatever, but I'm just saying there's options, especially if it's someone that care, like two people that care for each other. Talk about your heart desires. That's the person that you should be open and honest about and i get it that there might have been instances where you might have said what you truthfully felt and your significant other either was upset or yelled or whatever it may be or didn't show you the affection or the care that you wanted in that moment but i feel like it's just so much easier and better for a relationship if you truly say what you really need and then if that's if your significant other can't provide that then that's where the conversation needs to go as to either have we reached a point where we're done in this relationship because we're both not getting what we need or how do we each get what we need instead of saying sneaking around and cheating and this and that. And I, once again, it's easier said than done, but I, I, at least that's where I strive. And that's what I, at least I try to have in my relationships, whether it's friends or significant others or husbands or whatever. It's just like, that's what I try to do, and that's what I want in return. It's just like I'd rather you tell me the hard truth than what well, they say the soft lie or whatever. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just like let, we could deal with the facts. We could deal with truth. <laughs> you know, we could mm-hmm. find a yeah. path and an avenue from that and grow to where we need to go. You know, I mean, some people can't. I mean, the truth is, some people can't. Like you said, like the poly life just isn't isn't for everybody, right? You know? But then that's and but then that's when I you think, get the path of saying, okay, you can't do it. Then I need to go find someone that can do it for me, and that be exactly. You know? And that's what people need to have that 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 hard talk with themselves exactly. as far as what they need. You know, like it's it's not okay to lie and do all that stuff behind the scene because you want to have your cake and eat it too. You need to buck up and be real with yourself. And there's something freeing about just enjoying and living the life that you want to live. Right. Like, why would you want to put yourself in a situation where you with someone that isn't giving you what you need? And it's not that the person, the person is lacking on their side it's just maybe they just that's not what they want and if you don't want that and they don't want that then go your separate ways and that's okay but you're you're just wasting time if you're staying in a relationship cheating so to the to the question i would say if you disclose it while you're dating i think it's a good way to disclose it in the sense of like you that's not who you are and and it's a good way to talk about your journey in life. Mm-hmm. And what I you, personally right, what like you to, to like see. Grow from it. Yeah, I I like to hear about people's evolution in life because it shows that that person is actually thoughtful and cognitive of who they are and what and what and who they want to be. And those are the type of people that I'm actually more attracted to than people who force feeds you like it's a damn interview when you're dating and they put the best foot forward. And then once you get in a relationship, then you're like, oh, wait, it's like, who is this? Oh, so you do. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I'd rather know all this up up hand. And like I said, a couple episodes before when we talked about not my man, blah, 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 blah. If my friend knows about this, too, <laughs> again, I she want my love, friend to tell me about this, up. too. But you know what? Show but you know what, though? There's a lot of people that live in glass houses that want to be throwing stones That's you know so too. like i i get what this person is i live like in a healing. hut huh what'd you say i live in a hut <laughs> <laughs> i live in a hut <laughs> ain't no glass over right. here <laughs> she on the beach she living on the beach she's like okay wide open. <laughs> but you know but like this person's fear of like what the person they're dating might think of them you know because they they've had an indiscretion in their past and it might quote unquote define them. But the reality of it is no, no one sin is greater than the other. You know, you could be, you could, for all, you know, this person that you're with could have bad credit, you know, or they could have like any number of things in their past that, you know, they're, they're just not a kind person, you know, maybe you're attracted to Mm -hmm. them, but maybe their personality, as you get to know them, they're not a kind person or person that's thoughtful or considerate of other people's needs or, you know, so many other things that 
you may be carrying this weight about something you did in your past that in fact does not define you. It's part of your journey. It's part of your story, but it doesn't define who you are. And it certainly does not um, dictate how you will behave in the future because you make that choice. You whether consciously or unconsciously make that choice every single day, you know, so I always advocate for, you know, just be as honest as you can um, and, you know, talk about, you know, what that experience was and talk about how that has impacted you today and who are you and then let your actions be congruent with your words, you know, so if mm-hmm. you say that does not define me, then better damn make sure that your actions live up to that. Because if not, you're nothing Absolutely. but a liar. A cheater, <laughs> and a, a cheater. deceiver, a heartbreaker. <laughs> Y'all remember that song? <laughs> I, I, and yeah, I won't yes. let you back in my life. So I'm taking <laughs> the house, the car, the kids, and the dog. I want it all. <laughs> Who sang that? I tell you what, it's hard. Who's, I forget. I, I tell you what, it's hard though to like live like these like mature relationships and have like these kind of mature um kind of deci- make these mature decisions. I remember, you know, mm-hmm. back in my single days, um, there was somebody that um, we had, we had, we had been friends for a very long time and we always wanted to date, but it just never really worked out because either they were dating something and I was single or I was single and they were dating somebody or whatever. And I remember like, we finally, you know, like we're both single at the same time. And, you know, we, we just had really great, you know, personal chemistry, all that kind of fun stuff. And, you know, we said, okay, let's give it a go. Let's, you know, let's try dating and see how this thing works or whatever. And I remember, you know, we were like in bed at one point and, you know, he was like, what do you think? Now we had made this decision to start like dating each other, like maybe two weeks prior or whatever, and been hanging out every day and blah, blah, blah. He was like, you know, what do you feel about, you know, us bringing somebody else in, you know, or like, you know, having like a threesome sometimes. And I'm just just like, in my mind, it was like, see, this ain't going to work. And it wasn't because I was turned off to the idea, but it was the timing of it for me. Because I was just like, you know, we're trying to figure out if we work. And if you're already thinking about somebody else and bringing somebody else, even sexually into this, this whole thing between you and I is never going to work. It could be sexual, but it wouldn't work. Right. So he, it's like he, it's on both but sides, but you made the decision. You have this to make the decision. This is not going to exactly. work for me. Yes. And yeah. that's exactly. a very hard thing because when you have that kind of chemistry and you like somebody so much and you just mm-hmm. you kind of, ro- you can even romanticize it like, oh, you know, we're, per- we would be a perfect complement to one another, you know, cause we all go through that. But when you actually have those real world conversations and whatnot and you get it out there, it's like you, then you have to be ready for the consequences. And, You know, sometimes you have to be the one making the choice like, oh, wow, you know, I just exposed, you know, shared something with this person and they didn't receive it well. And wow, what does that tell me about, you know, how vulnerable I can be with them about other things that may come up in the future? And you have to make those hard choices. Yeah, I agree. So. Thank you for sending that question in. And by the way, I just looked it up. It was Profile who sang that song. Remember Profile? Yeah. Where's Profile at? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, speaking of relationships, um, there's that story about the woman that was charged for kind of like aiding and her boyfriend's suicide. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, Yeah. Hear about that? Mm -hmm. Words matter, y'all. Yeah. Yes. I read that story and I. I had to take a walk because I was so upset. <laughs> you had to Jill Scott. Like, <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you. Well, first of all, like since, especially since this year, and I've been very vocal about this all year, 2019 event has been very hard for my mental health. And to hear that someone was going through depression and their partner was aware of them going through this depression yeah. and was manipulating them and telling them to go kill themselves. And hundreds like, was, and thousands of times text vocally vocally we're like seventy five thousand text messages about them going back and forth and her saying so many negative things talking about it, the world would be better i your family and the world would be better without you was on the parking garage with him when he committed suicide like the fact that someone can take advantage of someone who needs help it's just so sickening it's, very it's sickening. so sickening and this is why another reason why i am so vocal about people 
like myself that are going through mental health and saying that it's okay to take time out for yourself and to make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. Make sure you seek help if you're not able to find it within yourself from, from those who are close by you because not everyone is a good person and there are people out there that will push you deeper and further into that pit that is so awful and so frustrating. I mean, if you have not gone through depression or anxiety, there's literally not a single thing or so- that someone can say to make you feel better. You just feel like a burden and it, everything just gets worse. And then to the point where just even laying down just feels like too much work. It's it's hard. So check on your people, you guys. It, you, if you're not going through it, check on those who are the most loving because it tend to be those people who are the ones going through it the most because they're always so focused on everybody else but themselves. You got to encourage people. And sometimes you got to yes, encourage yourself, encourage. too. I forget what song that is. I used to use, listen to that. I think that's Donald Lawrence. Oh, encourage yourself. Woo! Encourage yourself. Uh, that is, <laughs> that's, that's my, my gospel song. Come on, Donald Lawrence. That is my sometimes gospel. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. But also encourage others. Absolutely. Speak life into others because you never know what people are going through. Honestly. Mm-hmm. You never know. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to tell someone to kill themselves? Are you kidding me? Like, that's insane. Over I hope, and what over they say, and What's over the old school again. saying? I hope they put her underneath the jail because right. that's sickening. And you were there when he committed the suicide? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. So she was Bye just girl. convicted, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, she was just convicted two days ago. And what was her? Do, mm-hmm. we, do you know where her sentence was? I hope it's underneath the jail. <laughs> I'm just yeah. trying to see underneath if she got more than 12 days, like Felicity Huffman. <laughs> Oof. You know what? You know what? Right, I think she did. I think she did. I think it said like fifteen months. Wait, fifteen me... months? Yeah, That's it? it was. It was. Yeah, it, you playing? It pays to be white. Here. I don't think she was white. <laughs> no, she, she was, was Asian. Asian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fifteen. I didn't yeah. know it was that short. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. Jeez. No. See. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh do uh, encourage me like I, and that's part of my love language too i need encouragement i don't need you telling mm-hmm. me how bad i am at something i don't need to tell me i made a mistake i don't need you to how me i could figure shit on my own but every <laughs> once in a while you just need to say you know what boo you did good today you know what boo i <laughs> love you i don't need you to tell me so you're here in this court no just <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking but no like that's how i like literally Sometimes you just need to hear someone other than yourself to say, good job. Or, yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and, and yep, as absolutely. friendships and relationships and family, we should want to do that for our people that we care about. You know, we want we mm-hmm. should want to see them succeed. We should want them to live their best life. We should want them to literally just shine like that does not take anything away from you. And if you feel right. like it does, then that's an issue. Like shine, helping mm-hmm. people shine does not take away from your shine. Shine just you just letting the whole room shine in. Like it's just getting extra bright in here. And you should people want need that. to learn. People need to learn how to start taking stock of themselves and the people Oof. that are around them. For Oof. real, mm-hmm. say it like, again, you know, girl. Like, Come on, Angelina there are, or there Angela, so- whatever your name is. <laughs> Let me light my <laughs> cigarette. Because <laughs> like. You know, like there's a lot of like we get a lot of these ask your auntie questions and, you know, and y'all please keep them coming. And it, they don't have to be this serious either. Y'all can hit us up with some, you know, something juicy or whatever. But um, but what it does tell us is that there are a lot of serious things that that we never knew that you guys are dealing with. And, you know, if there's any way that we can offer, if our advice is helpful, we intend it to be helpful because we want to lift up the community. Um, You know, so we want to encourage you guys to keep reaching out. But the theme that I see over and over and over again with a lot of these is that, you know, there are so many people that are are so afraid of what other people think. And in large part, because they have the, a lot of wrong people around them. They have mm-hmm. people that they just they have acquaintances and they call them friends or, you know, call them their family. Yes. And, you know, not everybody has your best interest at heart. Not everybody, mm-hmm. even sure the person don't. and even the, some of the closest people to you take you for granted. And I say this all the time. You teach people how to treat you. So when you Oof. put up with stuff and you That's allow hard people to, to walk over, you, it, it is hard. But some people need to hear the. Some people near, need to hear it, and you need mm-hmm. to sit in it, and you need to just just marinate in in what that feels. Because if somebody, if you're afraid to talk to somebody, 
because you're afraid of what they may do or what you may lose. There's something in that that you need to learn about yourself. And there's something in that that you need to learn about the relationship you have with that person. And Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. You need to abandon these people, but there is, you need to take stock of who you are and who you have around you. And I think that's a big thing in the gay community, even just because oh. for so long, you're not accepting of yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I, Ruth says it all the time. How, if you don't love yourself, how the hell, you know, are you going to love someone else? And how the hell are you going to allow someone to love you? You know, right. mm-hmm. the way right. that you want to be loved. And that's mm-hmm. such a hard lesson because like don't get it twisted yes we were here giving advice but yo auntie's going through the same shit day in day out and Bitch, been there work. done that and still <laughs> been work. there and doing it. right so it's just like don't <laughs> y'all don't, don't know this twisted. is the part therapy for us too <laughs> it's so serious. it's not like we got all of our Woo! shit together no but it's, it's such a hard lesson to learn especially in the gay community when you're constantly feeling you're not good enough you know and even when you're out in all this you still get like situations where you're like oh am i good enough like you know you just is look constantly there i would even expand that to the straight community and anything in between like yeah, it's, this is true. not just like a uh you know like a sexual right. preference thing no. it is truly a human identity thing i think more that's and true. more and more like as we get more dependent upon technology and and we get more emotionally disconnected with language and the power of communication i know so many people and my i include myself in this that there are just some things that i don't even know how to say like how do you even bring that up and i feel like because we yeah like we just we just we live in an environment where we talk less you know we talk less on the phone we talk less in person, you know, we're texting, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you're sitting in two or three words or whatever, you know, sometimes a mini paragraph or whatever, but it's, it's, it's not sitting down and having like that, that discourse and being able to articulate what it is you're feeling, feeling, why you're feeling that way, what it is that you want out of the other person and how can you get there and mediate those conversations. A lot of us don't have those skills, so it's really, really hard. So I don't want you guys to feel like, oh, this is just like a gay thing because I know we have a lot of, you know, straight listeners and everyone in between. You know, this is just a human thing. Yeah, human absolutely. Nature. But yeah, and that's that story really broke my heart. Um, yeah, I just... If you're in a relationship community and you're not feeling loved, or if the person not supporting you and cheering you on as if you're their number one, che- if they're as if they're your number one cheerleader, leave them mm-hmm. or her. Bye, because there's someone else. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm all for it, all for it. And trust that, us, that it's gonna be harder needs- than you think. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it, yes, it's emotional, it you're emotionally t- but- tied to it, but. It will get better. <laughs> yes, but you, you have to have value in yourself. Yes. You have to, like you have to have self worth and value Absolutely. in who you are and what you want and what you deserve out of life. And if you know that that is up here, don't settle for nothing less. You know, like keep searching. You know, this person might look like it, fall a little bit short. Sucks to suck. Move on to the next. Mm-hmm. You know, but don't don't sell yourself short. Just don't ever. So, yeah, I definitely had to say that and bring up that story. And another story I wanted to bring up was that story about the gay cop who got mm, um, was it $2 million, million or $20, 20 yes. million dollars because the police department was making homophobic jokes. But newsflash, we got police officers killing black folks for no and reason and we can't get brown people and we can't get them in jail we can't get no we can't get nothing speak on nothing it. they still they still getting hired again and different and different police uh, departments are you, are you kidding me i mean no shade to the man who was feeling who was going through the homophobic slurs at work that should not happen okay mm-hmm. but if we can be outraged about this we should be outraged about the physical lies being taken off this goddamn earth mhm and it's upsetting to see the community behind this man when the police officers or the police departments acting a fool but when it's a non 
LGBTQIA plus person and they happen to be a person of color, mm-hmm. they silent. Yeah, I ain't got nothing else Button to add to that. Lit. We over here just flipping <laughs> hair toss. <laughs> you better preach. We, we on this right. tonight. Come on now, boo. You better preach a good word today. <laughs> I'm going down. Look. <laughs> I'm going down. <laughs> about to call benediction right now. <laughs> right. And I guess while, look, I guess while I'm rolling too, let's talk about this Halloween costume too. Oh, uh, I bet you're bringing oh, this one Mm-hmm. The, the, about the man yeah, the couple that dressed, where it's a white guy and a the Hispanic couple. guy and the white guy is an ice agent and the Hispanic is a Hispanic like uh illegal alien or something he's a, yeah. he's, a not stereotypical, he's a stereotypical depiction of a Mexican with the thick mustache and the sombrero mm-hmm. why would you mm-hmm. want to do that to your own culture <laughs> like why like it's not cute you just doing it to try to get attention, like that stuff. Like that stuff in like the gay He's community colonized. that pisses me off. When you like, I mean, okay, we all like to put like a little dot picture out here, and you think you're looking cute. Okay, I want a little attention today, but this is not the way to do it. Like That's to demean your it's own not. culture like that. <laughs> That's stupid. That's so just insensitive. disrespectful. Like that's over. Th- that's up there with blackface. Do not do it. Do not do this ice agent shit. Don't do no I Native bet that American Hispanic stuff. Dudes, all his friends are white. He's probably like that self hating, that self hating, self loathing, trying um, to get attention person from of color. The white gay exactly. community. Exactly. It's like, oh, and he, it was probably his idea. It was probably his idea. It's like, uh, oh yeah, you know, I think it would be really cute, or I think it would be really kind of funny, you know, quote unquote funny, is if we did this. Meanwhile, you're just expressing your it. own self loathing. And putting down your whole people. Well, I hate that the fact that he and I'm quoting what he said on his on Instagram. So he goes, he goes. Funny thing is that if you dress up as a priest, you equal against religion. If you jump dress up as Donald Trump, you equal a piece of shit. Dress up as an animal, and you against vegans, and you keep going and going. But the bottom line is that no matter what the fuck you do or say, you'll be judged no matter what. First of no. all, Hefa. Right. Get, get, first get of all, together, Jarell. Come on. We only you shoot, ain't the on. only Hispanic person on this goddamn earth, nope. okay? So when you want to go out there making broad statements like, oh, as if this is okay, you may be comfortable with this, but other people aren't comfortable with it. And that's the fucking point. You don't speak for everyone. And all you're doing are gaslighting all those other individuals who don't like people like you and like other people that fucking look like you that go through that. You are lucky to be with someone who doesn't give a fuck about who you are. But guess what? The rest of the world got something to say. And you ain't doing nothing but giving them something more to say. You need to you need to think before you speak. You need, you to, need think to think before, before you, you react. <laughs> and before you dress. Because you look a goddamn fool. And you need to work out them forearms. Yes. He's gonna he's gonna reg- I, he's gonna regret that one in the future, I feel. I feel like he's gonna mm-hmm. look back at that even if it's five days, five years, ten years. I feel like he's really gonna look like look back on this and be like, damn, what was I doing? Like what was I doing? And the pictures out there is viral. He's gonna be at- He's gonna Spiral. be one of them ones asking for, asking your auntie. I did something stupid last year in 2019, <laughs> and I don't want us to haunt me. Aunties, help me out. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. And I know there are gonna be some listeners that gonna have that ain't gonna like what I got to say. Here we go. And I'm I'm gonna say right now. I don't give one fuck. Get them. It's very easy in the gay community to get whitewashed as a PLC because so much that you see in the gay community are about white men. And so you get lost in doing what white people do on a daily basis in the gay community that you can easily forget that you are a POC because you are around a, uh, surrounded by white people that accept you. But you forget that's a small pocket of white people that accept you. The rest of the white community may not feel like that. And so it's not OK to go and make type like to make fun of yourself, especially when it's racially like this, because you're not the only person of your ethnicity. You are a representation of everybody that looks like you. Just like if it was something that was anti-LGBTQIA+. I I bet you, I guarantee you, people in in the community would have had an issue with that. And don't let your need... 
don't let your thirst to be light overshadow right. your judgment to be right. Whoop. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, too. Like, that costume is literally, like, a white person dressing up as a Ku Klux Klan member and yep. you going around with, like, a noose around your neck. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, that's the equivalent of this, like, this costume right now. Is that vulgar? Is that wrong? And is that insensitive? Just because you thought you were going to get liked and seen with wherever you these guys lived. Like, this is wild. So let me ask you this question. Who's more in the wrong? Is the 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 Mexican? There's no one. The Mexican, excuse me. The, the Latin guy who dressed up as a stereotypical Mexican more wrong than the white guy that's dressed up as an ICE agent that's arresting him. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be the, it's going to be the Latino. To me, it's the Latino because I'm sorry. The white person is being a white person Ooh. as far as I'm concerned. Oh, but I know the that. Latino <laughs> person. <laughs> he being a bad white. <laughs> he's being a bad he'd white a bad exactly right. he'd be in a he'd be, he'd be in a bad white but i'm saying when it comes to racism it's more expected of a white person to naturally go that direction and not get the bigger picture you know he should have known better being a poc and maybe he's just one of those pocs that has a spoon a silver spoon in his mouth that just hasn't had to go through some of the you know adversities as other poc people mm-hmm. and so maybe he just don't get it yet but i hope somebody put a nice big 12 inch boot up his ass so he wakes the fuck up mm. she said what she said <laughs> Yeah, no. It, it, once I saw that come through, I was like, "Oh Lord Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing?" And it, and it always seems like there's something every Halloween where you're just like, people lose their damn minds on Halloween. Like, th- they lose their damn minds. Like, you don't do blackface. Don't do don't do anything culturally. Instead of if you ain't part of that damn culture. <laughs> Don't do it. Sit your ass down. There's a billion. Well, the truth of the fact is, your your costume fucking sucks. If the only way to, <laughs> for you to get your costume through is by painting your face, mm-hmm. like if you if you can't be someone else in a you know as a costume, if you can't dress up a, the correct way as someone else, that means either your clothes ain't right, your accessories ain't right, right. your hair ain't right, your swag whatever. Ain't what, right. But you should. Right. But you should be able to dress up as whoever Mm -hmm. without doing blackface. You should be able to dress up as anyone else without being racist Mm -hmm. or culturally insensitive. You know, like. And and also a reminder, every costume ain't for everybody. (laughs) Everything Mm -hmm. ain't meant to be a damn costume either, by the way. (laughs) All right, I'm done. Jarrell's here. (laughs) (laughs) I know by the time this comes out, we're going to have so many more incidences to oh, report <laughs> <I know. laughs> because people y'all just don't get y'all it be, they like, be steady trying it don't need to have do, several seats don't do the race thing like it's just it's important no matter what your intentions are it's just it just doesn't come off it's just like you want it to taste it is it really is and honestly nine times out of ten it isn't honoring that race it's not honoring that character it's it's making fun of, making quote unquote right. light of, and at the end of the day, you look like an ass. But you know who did it right though, Sierra. Who? Oh, Sierra. Why she look like Beyonce uh, though? That was, Russell that was Wilson. Cute. Yes, that was she real. She had cute. her mannerisms down, down she said, when she, ball, she was looking at him. Ball, uh, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> bitch. Like, yes. Come on, Cece. They look good. Russell wasn't too much. Russell kind of sucked, but Cece was killing it. <laughs> I mean, so does Jay Z. So I think he did a really oh, good man. job. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord. Uh, did you oh, see that um, Apple and their next set of emojis? They're coming out with non binary emojis and more yes. like gender fluid and neutral uh, uh, emojis. I don't know which That's update. I'm not sure if it's like the 13.3 update or what, but they're going to get more emojis which show the fluidity and the spectrum of the LGBTQIA plus community, which is awesome because I think that is an influence from Tim Cook. If your CEO is gay, there's going to be f- yeah. ways that he's like, you know what? We need to include more of my community in the products that we're making. So I'm here for it. All the way here for it. Thank you, Apple. Even though you're charging That's an cute. arm and leg for your products, like those oh, new yeah. AirPods, 
Those new AirPods oh are like $300. Yeah, like $250 for them little things. I'll pass. Right, a hard pass. I'm still waiting on. I'm still waiting on that that daddy on retainer that Dewan was talking about huh. last week. So. Like where he at? <laughs> we can add that to the list on right. buying things on someone else's dime. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Oh, I feel like with Lord. all the all the new emojis that they be coming out with, they need to get rid of some. Like, because oh. there's a whole bunch of them that I don't think anybody ever uses. <laughs> like which what let's look at okay pull up your phone right now pull up your phone right this now this is let's, impromptu community we had this was not on the list to talk agenda, about but, but we're about to like shock each not other not at all <laughs> so if you go what into the your, food and drink section no i was about to mm-hmm. say what is you in your most used huh. emojis right now like oh, what's what the one, most used oh let's see because you know how it's the frequently used uh do you want here. like the last three no, it's usually the first whatever the first twenty one. or whatever on my your first, your thing. Yeah, my my most used one is the smiley face with the stars for the eyes. Mine right now. Mine's is the mine's is the laughing emoji. Mine is the, the heart right the, now. Oh, that's nice, Corel. Ow. mine goes like. <laughs> and then and then my second my second is the one with the fingernails being painted because you know she petty. <laughs> so she be. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> mine is. You know, the, I'll uh, be sitting there on the daily. I'll be right. the one liners. <laughs> My top three, he, or I guess let's say four, is the heart. Then it's the the guy with the face palm, and then it's the mm-hmm. dead, the skull, because I'll be dead about everything on the internet. And then it's the, the hand clap because I'd be getting my point across. <laughs> and then it's the, the laughy face with the tears because, you know, I'd be crying when I laugh. And then it's the hands up, like the hallelujah or high five, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. Mine mine is the um, smiley face with the star eyes. The two hands up, given the, the you know, hands up or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. The laughing face with the sweat dropping down from one side. Um <laughs> The 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 wink and the kiss face, and then the crying laughing one, where it's like it's like a stream <laughs> of tears. It's not like the little like dr- drops. It's like yeah, the stream yeah. of tears. The stream. See, yeah. <laughs> this is a reflection of me. God damn it! <laughs> and this is my drug through the blender. <laughs> so, like my like I said, my first one is the smiley with the two little um little tears on the side of the face. Then it's the it's the the fingernails being painted. Then it's the black man with the hands in the air, like and I. Ooh. <laughs> and, and I'm surprised. Uh, and my own mind is in there. It's too. above me now. It's, mine, it's above, me. Right, it's above me now. And then <laughs> next is the clapping hands. Followed by the angry face, and then the the mad face. What when he's puffing his mouth? He's like, you know, he's like uh, want, like puffing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I've only used that maybe like twice out of all the years. Mm-mm. Look, those are my two. That that's when you know I got an attitude. Those are my two uh, <laughs> attitude emojis. And you know which one is mm-hmm. in the bottom right of mine. So I haven't used it a, a lot lately. But it's the fax machine. The eggplant. <laughs> it's the fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> you were on a roll machine. using that because I, I, I that was I like use, your mm-hmm. I use the fax machine for my fax like F A C T S. <laughs> yes, I put the fax machine and people be like, "What is that?" I'm like, "Say it out loud." They be like, "Oh, so that's your you. last, the last of your frequently used." Uh huh. My the last of mine is a uh, is the guy the face with the eyes looking up, like ugh, oh. that guy. Oh, uh, I yeah, know mine my, are mine are. Like, I'm not as sassy as you guys are. <laughs> like, mine are all like <laughs> sweet and encouraging, and I think okay. I have like I have a little, <laughs> I have a little heartbreak. Last week he was pure. There. This week he's encouraging. <laughs> I do not know this <laughs> other <Okay>. one. <laughs> Look, <laughs> <laughs> who is she? <laughs> it's, it, is, it is congruent with my brand. <laughs> uh huh. I hear you, girl. Okay, now she Auntie uh, well, Chardonnay. She can't be. She can't be living all that reckless life like Auntie Hennessy and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple that I used like yesterday that I never used, but it was in reply to the community, like the dancing girl, and then I forget. Mm-hmm. It might have been Esther put something, and I put the running man with the the smoke behind him because you're like you better uh-huh. run or something like that. So I did that. So that's my reason, <laughs> but I never use that. Oh, and then I had the tea cup and the the hand with the the okay for the the sip mm-hmm. tea. I also have the the arms up one that Jarrell said. I use that one a lot. Um, 
Yeah. That's See, funny. I got I got like one, two, three, four different hearts in my frequently used. I have the <laughs> face with the heart died. eyes. I know I do. I do have the <laughs> I have the it's above me now guy. I do have that one. Um I've got the shock face. Um I got the poop smile. I got the fire. What's the poop? Oh, have, the shit smile. I was like, what's the poop yeah, smile? Yeah, the poop smile. And then I've got three stars. I've got the skull. I got the face palm. I got the cheers glasses and champagne. The, you know, the the champagne flutes and the champagne bottle. Um, I have a cupcake and I have a dollar bag. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cupcake. That's and a an interesting dollar. conversation. We need, but we need to, look, I we need see to those switch wigs. <laughs> my we, need do, we need to do a phone swap. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a lot on here. I didn't even know what was in here. I'm scrolling through. I'm like, oh, they got that. They got that. It just be too mm-hmm. many. There's no easy way to get emojis now. There's so many. No. They need to do like yeah. a find. And I guess when you type, certain ones pop up, but mm-mm. But not mm-mm. all the time. Right. Not all the time. I know. Mm-mm. But uh, before we get out of here, have you guys watched Watchmen? That show on HBO, the uh, comic book no. show? I've been hearing so a lot good. of buzz mm-hmm. about it. Have you have you so watched it? So good. Yeah, so it's only two uh, I guess by Monday it'll be three episodes in. It has Regina King in it. It has uh Don uh what's the guy from Miami Vice back in the day? Um Oh, um I almost said Don Lemon, but <laughs> I was going to say Don Knox. <laughs> Don Johnson. I'm like, that ain't it. Don Johnson. <laughs> has Don Johnson in it. And it's about the comic books, but they have it. The cool thing Wait, that they Don did. Johnson in is, Don is in Johnson's it. Don Johnson's in it. That's yeah. a throwback. Wow, throwback. from Miami Vice. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so it's based on the comic books, but they mm-hmm. have the setting in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the cool thing they're doing mm-hmm. is really incorporating it to the racial tensions of today, but it's based in the future. And uh, the very first episode, the very first scene, they do a throwback to the 1921. To the Tulsa Massacre. I don't even call them riots oh, because the reason why I don't call it a riot is because that has a uh, time stipulation on it. That's the reason why the cops of that day call it the Tulsa riots because now we cannot go back and hold the city or the community accountable. But if it was a massacre, there's no time uh, stipulation oh. on that. So if it's a thousand years, you could still go back and find communities or families guilty so just a little tidbit so that's why the white community then called it a riot and everywhere you see it's called the tulsa riots do the they tulsa explain Black that in the episode no but that's just a little tidbit oh. i know of oh okay that's stupid but there are a lot of like it's crazy how many white people didn't know even that know it. about mm-hmm. it because again it's one of those moments in history here in this country that are it's not educated people don't yeah. know even in oklahoma about people this. don't know about yeah. it yeah yeah. Like my, uh, mm-hmm. One of my college roommates, when I lived in Dallas, he lived in Tulsa. So I went up there and visited him because it's maybe a three, four hour drive from Dallas. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Take me to Black Wall Street or the area that was Black Wall Street, I should say. Yeah. And it's crazy how it's you wouldn't even know. There's nothing yeah, there. Yeah, you honestly they you brought that to the ground. No. They did. Mm-hmm. And, the white uh, people it, got so mad at how rich and powerful black people were getting that tiny little that tiny little um, town, and they came in and they burned it to the crisp. And what's and what sparked it? And I guess I'm giving more information than that. What the episode was? What sparked it was there was a black guy that went to every day. He would go to a white owned hotel to because they actually allowed him to use the bathroom there because he was a shoe shiner. Uh, and so back then they had elevator operators and a lot of them, times it was white women. So he got in the elevator, the woman screamed and they thought he was raping her. So literally the town got out, followed them into back to Greenwood, um, part of Tulsa and burnt the community down and murdered yep. at least 300. And yep. people don't even know where these bodies are to this day. However, two weeks ago, Tulsa started doing radar to certain areas of the city where they think they might have had mass burials from that town because the mayor now knows the importance and the significance of what happened then. And he's like one of the first mayors to at mm-hmm. least acknowledge it. But anyway, back to Watchmen. Damn, yeah. Long story short, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they opened that, literally, they opened the series. About the Tulsa uh, race riots, quote oh, unquote, wow. Tulsa race massacre. And it's cool to see a show literally dive into it. And then it's the basis of 
the rest of the show, even though it's based in the future now. And so there are okay. superheroes and things like that, but the foundation is all about the racial situation in Tulsa back then and today. So it's cool how they tie it all together. It's well written, it's well acted. So if you have not seen this show, I highly recommend it. If you don't have HBO, maybe wait to the end of the season and then go on a free trial and binge it. <laughs> but it's on every Sunday night. This. It is so, 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 so good. Um, it is, it's just, they nail it. They nail it. Is, and it's pinpoint of what's going on even in today's society. And the is Regina King, does Regina King just acting in it or does she have any kind of production or directorial uh, kind of? That's a good question. Um, I think she's just acting. It. If I remember right. The only reason right, I ask uh-huh. is because just thinking about that specific, like the way that they set it off, with the way that you described it being set off, the it seems really congruent. The writer really of the show is a white with, man. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, I'm, one of the things that she had committed to doing was that through her own production company, she had committed to hiring a lot of, like, women, um, you know, like, producers, actors, etc. So I was just curious. Right. I don't think it's hers because that's – I think she was on Jimmy Kimmel and how she even got the role was, like, she was friends with the guy that wrote – that's writing the show – and he really wanted her to be on the show. And she was like, oh, you know, I'm busy, this and that. And then she gave him, he gave her the script. And she's like, oh, shit, I got to be in this. Um, mm. So he kind of, like, sought her out. I don't think it's under her production company at all. It's a well-known, okay. I forget his name. Right. It's a well ro- well-known showrunner from previous well-known shows. And I can't, it's escaping me right now. But it's okay. just, no it's worries. awesome. It's awesome. I. Uh, so this weekend on my list of things to watch. So by the, so since we're talking about TV shows, mm-hmm. I, did y'all see Dolomite? No, I want to watch. That's on my list. No, I didn't oh, see that yet. I heard it was good. Oh my god, is it good? It is it's amazing. Eddie is back. Eddie is back. Eddie is and back. Now? I mean, I was a little bit nervous, but you know, because he's got coming into America coming out. He's supposed to be having his comedy special coming out, and then you know he's in this Dolomite. And I was like, okay, well, let's get a taste of what you know Eddie, Eddie's all about. Because is this going to be Doctor Doolittle kind of Eddie or what? And for for you guys that don't know what Dolomite is, so first of all, um, Dolomite is a um, so it's a um, black exploitation movie um, from like the seventies, mm-hmm. and the Dolomite that's on Netflix right now it stars Eddie Murphy, um, uh, Wesley Snipes, um, the to girl from um, in it. Orange Is the New Black. I forget her name. Uh, at any rate, um, so it's it's got it's got a, you know some really great cast members in there, and they're basically retelling the story of the making of that movie and how this movie got made. And I won't spoil it for you, but I'm telling you, like all the stuff that you really love Eddie Murphy for, like the cussing and the facial expressions, and like just the the timing and just all the comedy, he brings it. You get raunchy, you get you know wholesome, you get everything in between. He, he doesn't play a lot of parts, so it's not like that, but it's like it's funny it has some serious moments in it uh but it's just it's so damn good so i'm so glad i got a chance to watch that and y'all got you guys should definitely check that out um and then yeah, this weekend i'm gonna i'm gonna watch raising dion um uh, which is in the vein of Watchmen, which is like a superhero theme it's about a single black uh mother who's raising a son who's like i don't know like under the age of 10 and but the son has superpowers so you have oh, this like I've single seen, mother. Yeah, I've seen previews for that. Yep. So I'm going to be watching that this weekend. So we'll we'll be able to recap whether or not that's something y'all should check out here soon. <laughs> uh, the Watchmen uh, writer, his name is Damon Lindelof. And I'm trying to see, find okay. out what else he wrote. Um, hold on. I'll tell you shortly. Um, he wrote for like back in the day, like Crossing Jordan, Nash Bridges, uh, Tomorrowland. Uh, the leftovers. So a lot of kind of like cult. Oh, the leftovers. Okay. Oh, and Lost. And he was a writer on Lost. Okay. Remember that show? Okay. Yep. Um. So yeah. So he's written a lot Terrible of stuff. Ending. I'm still mad at that show. Fuck that show. <laughs> Terrible ending. <laughs> that ending. I'm so mad. Yep. I'm still, still mad. mad. It's been over a decade. I'm still mad. Hashtag, Hashtag never, never let go. it go. Right. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, too funny. But anyway, I guess that's what we're getting to the end of the episode here. Community, continue to subscribe and download and share. We appreciate you 
you engaging with us all the time on IG and Facebook and all that. Continue to tell your friends, your neighbors, your cousins, your baby mama, your baby mama, mama, your baby mama, mama, mama. mama. mama, and, uh, mama. Oh, oh, and before we else. forget, um, we're going to put a post out there today, but I just want to let y'all know that we're going to we thank y'all for sending us all of your fun and spooky and sexy Halloween costumes. We have a little collection. And then today we're going to be posting them all so you guys can get to vote on them. And whoever gets the most votes on Instagram, what we're going to do is we're going to give them a very special prize. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And today is Monday. So like, if you listen to this episode like months later, you you lost. It, it's a wrap. <laughs> yep. Because we're, we're going mm-hmm. we're to we're post it on Monday <laughs> and then by... By this coming Wednesday, we're going to shut it down and then we're going to announce the winner for next week's yes. episode. So yes, yes, you need yes. to get them votes in right away. <laughs> so uh, until then, we will see you next time. Have a great week. Bye. Guys. Y'all have a good week. 